Hello everybody, welcome to a stone coin tutorial on downloading and managing a stone core wallet on your Mac. There's also a Windows wallet and a Linux wallet and I'll create other vi different videos for those. They're very similar, at least the Windows is very similar to the Mac version. Uh, before we get started, I want to give you a little introductory on the stone coin in case you're not familiar. Uh, stone is a decentralized digital asset just like Bitcoin, meaning there's no centralized government, authority, or bank that manages it. It is controlled and used by its miners and people like you and me. So there's no one person or one authority that runs the network. It's completely decentralized. Um, also, Stone, Stonecoin has a max supply of 40 million coins. There's currently 3 million coins, around 3 million coins in the supply right now. As we can see here, 3,075,000 coins. And you can receive a 100 coins per confirmed block if you are currently mining stone coin. So it's very easy to mine right now also. So that's something you might want to think about doing. Um, and there's some other tutorials on how to do that. Um, also, if you are mining, uh, the block reward halves every 200,000 um, blocks. So currently it's at 100. It's pretty easy to mine. So let's get started in learning a little bit about the wallet. Let's, let's go ahead and download the Mac wallet. First, you need to go to stonecoin.org. Then you need to go to the wallet and click download. And you'll see it down here. You also can see it in your downloads folder. You can just double click on it. A little pop-up's gonna show up. And you just drag your little stone core icon into your applications folder where it will load. Close these windows. And let's go find it. All right, here it is. So we can just click on it. And you're gonna notice, you're probably gonna have the same warning basically saying it's the Mac OS cannot confirm that it is a legitimate software. It might have malware. It's just not, the developer is not confirmed. So what we want to do here is just click cancel. Um, it is not malware whatsoever. Um, and then we're going to go to finder applications, find the stone core icon, double click on it, click open. We're going to get another pop-up message. And we're just going to click open and it will open it. We only have to do this the first time. You don't have to keep doing this every time you want to open the stone core. Uh, next pop up, it's going to ask, where do you want to store your wallet? I use the default directory, but you can store it wherever you want. Now it's going to load the wallet. The first time you load the stone core, you're going to notice this um, little message. What it's doing is it's synchronizing the blockchain onto your stone core wallet so the depending on how many number of blocks there are it looks like there's over 30,000 now and you can see how they're load they're synchronizing into your wallet uh, it's synchronizing to all the different nodes out there to make sure that you have the latest block of stone on your wallet um, this could take five to ten minutes you just need to pay, be patient and it could freeze up a little bit if it does don't worry just let it load it'll be fine um, while this is loading, while it's synchronizing, I just want to mention just because you have a wallet, the Stone Core wallet on your computer, it does not mean if you do have stone in your wallet that those stone are actually stored on your computer. Those stone are actually still saved on the blockchain. So as long as you have the private key for your wallet or you've saved backups of your wallet on like a USB drive or other drives, uh, you cannot lose your stone. So it's very important that we do backups and I'm gonna show you how to do that and also how to create a private key and keep that private key hidden and safe. Do not share it with anybody or they can access your stone. I'm also assuming um, if you're doing this that you are familiar with a public and private key. If not, I'm gonna be creating another tutorial on that, on basically how cryptocurrencies work, including stone core, it's very similar to Bitcoin. Um, and so that'll give you a better idea as well. So this is going to take eh, it's probably a couple more minutes. So I'm going to pause the video until this is done synchronizing and then I'll be right back. Welcome back. The wallet has finished synchronizing and this is what it looks like. It's pretty simple. Uh, we only have four tabs here. We have the overview, send, receive, and transactions. Um, and we're going to notice we have zero stone here. So um, the first thing you might want to do is go, if you click on it, go to windows and receiving addresses and you're going to notice that you do not have any um, it's empty so basically you cannot send or receive here 
um, yet. I'll show you how to do that to add it. We have the send tab. So you have the overview tab that shows you available, pending, total. Send tab where you can put in a public address here and send and then a label like if you want to add someone to your address book, the amount. And then what kind of transaction fees you want? Do you want the recommended or do you want the custom? Um, which the transaction fees are super low for, for uh, Stonecoin. And then if you want to, the receive tab, if you want to actually send somebody an invoice, you can create one. So um, you can like, for example, say, you know, uh, payment from work. You can like say an amount, oh, I'm owed 10 stone. Then you send them a message like, please, Pay me at your earliest convenience, and I can't spell. Um, and then you can actually click this, and this will actually generate an address for you. Um, and then you can request a payment. And all this does is it creates a link that you can send somebody. So you just copy this link here, and you go, you send it to them, <clears throat> and then they click on it, and it opens their Stone Wallet. But this actually did create an address, I believe. So before we go look at that address, we'll click on the fourth tab called Transactions. And you'll notice there's no transactions right now. So let's go back up to Windows. We'll go to Receiving Addresses. And you'll notice that an address was created. It starts with an S. Uh, this is the public address. It's not the private address. Uh, but we can change the label, too, if we want. So like, first public address. You can change it to whatever you want. You can be like, like my first account or whatever, put your name on it. Uh, but this is the address. <clears throat> um, and then say you wanted to actually save the private key for this address, you could actually, I think if you double click it, you can copy the address, copy the label, you can edit the label. But if you want the private key, you would actually have to go up to, you'd have to go back up here to the console after you, you copy, we want to copy. The address and then we'll go up to the Windows console and then you have to do some stuff you have to say um, actually forget so what we're gonna go do is look at our FAQs so how do we I lost my wallet. how do I export my private key right here dump private key and then you put in your private key or the public public key so we'll go do that so we'll type in dump private key, then we paste our public key, and then it gives us the private key. So this is our private key. And we can save that. We do not want to share that with anybody else. Um, it's for us only. Now, another way to add public keys is we can actually go back to StoneCoin, and we can go to the Stone Wallet Generator. Uh, and you can create a public key by moving the mouse around, but I'm just gonna click skip. And you'll see here we have a public key and a private key, and you can just generate new ones. And you'll notice public keys generally start with an S or a T, and the private keys usually start with a seven. So, but what we can do here is we can find a public key and a private key we like, and we can copy the private key and you want to save that, <clears throat> never share this with anybody or they can steal your stone coin. And we can go back to our stone wallet, go back up to console, type in import private key, and we'll paste it there, hit enter, it imports it. It's gonna take a second. And this should be then a new public address in our stone wallet. All right, it's done. So now let's go look at our receiving addresses. And there it is. And it has no label. So we need to create a label. So we will, this is our second public address. There we go. Okay, so now we have two addresses in our wallet. And just to, to go over this again, uh, our public address, think of this as like a bank account number. So this is the address that we um, used, to, if we wanna receive stone coins, we can give this to people to receive them. 
and then this is our private key and this is the key that's used to access this public key so if you have stone in this <clears throat> public address and you lose your private key you will never ever get them back they will be lost forever in fact if you just generate random addresses and send stone to them and never save the private key they call that burning coins because they will go into these addresses and nobody will ever be able to get them again there's no way to ever go get these coins again they're lost forever so you got to make sure you write this stuff down it's very important uh, another thing we will want to do is we are going to want to password protect our wallet so that way people just can't send our coins if they access our wallet they can't just send our coins um, anywhere they can't just without having the password so the, the way to do that is we're going to go to settings here we're going to click encrypt wallet and then we're going to add a password or a passphrase so i'll go ahead and do that all right and i'm gonna click ok warning if you encrypt your wallet and lose your passphrase you will lose all of your stone so basically we're encrypting our wallet if we lose this password now we will also lose our stone so it's very important to write down the password that is not 100 percent true if you have the private key if you have the private key, you can always access them later. The private key is the most important part. We just will not be able to access them through this wallet. We'll have to delete the wallet and reinstall it and then re-import the private key. So, all right, so that's done. It's now encrypting the wallet so that people cannot send or access the wallet without the password. So it's very important that we have the password. So I would recommend doing that. And then after this encrypts the wallet, it's gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna recommend that we save a backup of the wallet. So you can save the backup of the wallet like on a USB file um, or USB drive on a different part of your computer. Can never have too many backups. You just have to be careful that people don't get your private key. That's the most important piece about this. I print my private keys out and I actually save a copy of them in a safe and then I also back up my private keys on a USB drive as well, and I save those separately as well, somewhere else, so that I have m multiple ways to access my stone. All right, so while this is, this takes a while, while this is happening, I'm actually going to pause the video because I'm gonna go find a private key that has some stone in it, and I will be right back. All right, I'm back. So our wallet is now encrypted, and you're going to notice that there are now 250 stone coin pending in this wallet. What I did is from a different computer, I sent 250 stone to one of our public addresses. I sent it to this public address right here, the second public address. And so now it's here pending. So it's gonna sit here in pending until the block that this transaction is occur has happened on is confirmed by a miner. So that could take a little bit of time, you know, it could take like 10 minutes or so. But once that block has been confirmed, this fund, the 250 stone, will go into available. Now, if that block is not confirmed because they find that there's double spending or other issues with that block, that block will be rejected and these 250 stone will go back to the original um, wallet that it came from. So right now it's pending. So I can't send them because they're not here, but once, these 250 stone are confirmed, then I'll be able to actually send them somewhere else. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit of time for that. And we also received a notification saying, hey, you've got some stone, super cool. All right, so I'm going to pause the video again until we're available and then I'm gonna show you how to send some stone. All right, we are back and we have some stone coin. Look, available, 250 stone. So we can now spend this stone. And if we go look at the transactions, we can look at the received public address label. Uh, does it show? Show some details if we click on it and it was sent to our public address here. So if we actually go out and look at the Stone Explorer. Well, so by the way, this is the stone. If you go to stone or, stonecoin.org and you scroll down to Stone Explorer, You'll come to a page we'll, sh we'll show you all of the, the transactions on the blockchain. Um, and we can type in here our public address. 
and you can see that we now have there's 250 stone at this this address you can see the hash the amount all that good stuff um, you can also stone explore you can see the top hundred coin holders and stuff like that all right so back to back to the wallet so we now have 250 stone so if we want we can send some stone to someone else so i have a friend i owe 50 stone coin to so i'm gonna type in his address and we'll just call him joe his name's joe and i own 50 so now i'm on the send tab i can send him 50 stone this is his public address i'm going to keep it at custom because i like it there and then i'm going to click send now we put in a password before so we're going to have to type that password in to confirm that we really do want to send it and this keeps other people from getting on our um, account and sending stone and we have to verify and there we go. 50 stone is being sent to Joe. And we can see that on our transactions. If we go to overview, you can see we now have 199.9999745050 stone. Um, there was a transaction fee. That's why we don't have 200. And you can see it was very small. And 50 stone is now leaving us and going to Joe. Pretty cool, right? Um, if you're mining stone, um, with you could use your wallet and you could receive 100 stone per um, black confirmation. So that's something you could also do with this wallet. Um, instructions are back at stonecoin.org. We have the tutorials here. I'm creating videos like crazy, so you can go through there and have some videos. But that's it for the wallet. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Leave them in the comments um, below. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, and this is this is this is it. This is great. This is Stonecoin Wallet. So make sure to save your private keys. Um, and then also to back up your wallet um, by going to file and clicking backup wallet. And that's basically saving your wallet a backup of it as well.